companies for sure. All of the major energy companies find it very attractive. They're, they're investing in it. Uh, the, uh, all of the transportation companies find it attractive. The major polluters want geoengineering. It's a, it's a, if it doesn't work, that's okay, but they bought themselves time. It gives them an excuse for not doing anything for another decade or another 20 years. The problem of climate change in the first place, who geoengineered us into this problem in the first place, are now saying, trust us, we'll geoengineer you out of it again. And I just don't trust them. I just don't think that's true. I can't believe that governments who don't have the intelligence or the integrity to tell their own populations that there's a problem here with climate change, who haven't had the guts to address the issues around the Kyoto Protocol, even that, are actually going to have the integrity or the intelligence to geoengineer the planet in a safe way. It's simply ridiculous. Figures? Okay, latest water test tested the rain. 13,100 micrograms per liter of aluminum in the rain in 2013. Normally, it should be zero. So 13,100 is pretty damn much, folks. It used to be zero. Then it was 100s in the 2000s. And then in uh, since 2010, it's into the 1,000s and the latest 13,100. In the snow on Mount Shasta, pristine Mount Shasta, 61,000 feet, no, excuse me, 8,000 foot level, 61,000 micrograms per liter, four times the amount that is found in the soil up there. Where in the hell is this stuff coming from if it's not coming from the soil? Okay, pH of acid soils is 20 times more alkaline. The aluminum in the soil has doubled in the last 10 years. The rain normal was 5.6, it's 20 times more alkaline. Aluminum blocks essential nutrients. I am unable in my garden to restore normal pH, and that's because nanoparticles are now in the circulatory systems of both plants and humans. So welcome. I looked into the literature and some of the reports and YouTube videos, and they were saying uh, that they were dropping uh, one of the ingredients of aluminum. Well, I had uh, done a fair amount of uh, writing and research uh, on the effect of aerosolized uh, chemicals in the, in the nose when you breathe them. And uh, what we knew was that these particles tend to travel along the uh, olfactory nerves, which are the smell nerves in the nose, and it travels directly to the part of the brain that has to do with memory and, and uh, emotions. Uh, the, the hippocampus, the interrhinal area, and the prefrontal cortex, and that you can trace these chemicals traveling along that nerve and depositing in this area of the brain. The other thing that was known is that if you aerosolize aluminum, uh, it's one of the metals that passes very easily along this track and directly into the brain. So it bypasses the blood-brain barrier and goes directly into the brain and accumulates. But if you do it in animals, it produces lesions or damage in that uh, area of the brain, and the animal uh, will begin to show changes of memory and learning and emotional changes. Uh, when we look at people who have Alzheimer's disease, ironically, the highest concentration of aluminum in the brain is uh, that same entry point, uh, what's called the interrhinal cortex, uh, and the levels uh, continue to accumulate. of 
hypertension would get worse. Uh, numerous diseases could be uh, precipitated and worsened uh, by such uh, an insane policy. But it is criminal. It's a criminal act. Yeah, no doubt. No one was asked permission to do this. This was not announced publicly. This was not uh, entered into a public forum. Uh, so <laughs> these health uh, issues could be discussed. Uh, they just secretly uh, have done it on a worldwide uh, scale of, of, uh, of an enormous proportion. Legitimate discussion about the state of the climate without first and foremost discussing climate engineering, the crown jewel of the military industrial complex, not just in the U.S., but in other countries as well, that are either actively or passively participating in these programs. And regarding climate engineering, as I've stated many previous times and will continue to state, there can be no legitimate discussion about climate engineering without first and foremost including patented processes of chemical ice nucleation for weather modification, which is occurring now over the Christmas holiday in the desperate attempt to cool down the most populated parts of the U.S. and keep them cool for a while to continue to confuse and divide the U.S. population in regard to the true state of the climate and the true severity of biosphere meltdown, keeping people willfully, in many cases willfully, people want to believe that everything is fine and they can stay asleep at the wheel. But to do so, to willfully stay in denial, to ground oneself in ideology, preconception, and program bias is a very cowardly act. The unwillingness to face the truth, and I would remind everyone that the hallmark of a healthy intellect is a willingness to face the truth no matter how dire, an unyielding willingness to face the truth, and we have so few in our population that are willing to do so because denial feels so much better, at least for a while, until we hit the wall at full velocity, and we are very close to doing exactly that. We need those who are already awake and aware to get off the bench, and many are still sitting on the bench. We need those who understand the ramification of climate engineering, which is also biological warfare. It's the single greatest threat we face sort of nuclear cataclysm, which is also unfolding. And climate engineering is a part of that equation as well, as I've outlined in previous programs. As climate engineering destroys the atmosphere, and we become very susceptible to a CME, a coronal mass ejection, which will shut down grids all over the globe, which will create hundreds of Fukushimas. So many roads lead back to the climate engineering insanity. And it's not really engineering, it's just climate destruction used by the power structure as weather warfare. Let me get to a few front line headlines. Actually, yet another theatrically named winter weather event just in time for Christmas, Winter Storm Dylan. And for those who roll their eyes again and walk away at the suggestion of such events being in geoengineered, I ask you, Show the courage to actually investigate the science facts related to climate engineering instead of hiding in denial, preconception, and ideology. That's what cowards do. There's a full post on geoengineeringwatch.org covering Winter Storm Dylan, the engineered event that's ongoing over the Christmas holiday. And ask yourself this, why and how would there be cooler surface temperatures in the lower 48 states than the temperatures in parts of the Arctic Circle? And as I've covered in so many previous programs, the cool temperatures are only on the surface, a shallow layer of cold, dense air that's the creation of climate engineering and chemical ice nucleation. Private and commercial pilots that communicate directly with geoengineeringwatch.org are continuing.